Yeah, they're right here, Gary. You can see there are a bunch of them. This is what students are going to be greeted with when they come to South High School this morning and many other DPS schools across the Denver area. So I'm joined now by Rob Gould, the union's lead negotiator. So you've been very busy over the past, what, month or so? Months, really? Yes, yeah, 15 months to be exact. And, and of course, before that, five years of studying PROCOM. So the last time you were at the negotiating table with the district was on Saturday. They released what they thought was a very fair deal with you guys. They were going to increase base pay by about 11 percent while also adding some more incentives for teachers who are working at high uh, risk or high profile uh, schools schools that have you know high poverty rates they believe that's important that's part of what you guys don't want anymore those incentives yeah you know we the the, the status quo of ProComp has really disrupted our schools and it's made it so that teachers don't you know they don't want to stay in Denver because of these unpredictable unreliable bonus structures and and so the teachers are leaving and we need to make sure that we have a fair and competitive salary structure that's comparable to other districts so the district says though that 11 percent in increase in base pay is a lot and that is fair what more do you want you know it's it's if it was just about that then it would be easy but unfortunately the district they they are relying on these this structure that doesn't make sense it's so difficult to move through the system it's been complicated it's been cumbersome. Teachers didn't know what their paychecks were for years and years and years. And, so, and the, the system that they're proposing continues that, that system. And it's it, the confusion and the unreliability. ProCop was something, though, that teachers were excited about from the beginning, at least many of them, because they thought it was going to add more money to their paychecks at the end of the day. And for some teachers, that ends up happening. It increases what they take home at the end of the year. But what has changed from 2005 until now? Oh, boy. So, yeah. ProComp was meant to be professional salaries for teachers. We were finally going to be really paid what we were worth. In 2008, that all changed when DPS forced us to take a system of bonuses and, and, ba and lower base salary. That over, the, over time, we knew these problems were, going, were there and they existed. And over time, that money that was paying out the bonuses actually dwindled to where teachers were taking a pay cut year after year after year. And so it's it's not working. The bonuses don't keep t teachers in Denver, and we need a, to raise the base pay for all teachers. Real quick, because I'm getting the wrap. You guys were invited to the negotiating table with the district on Sunday. You decided not to go. Why did you decide not to go to avoid the strike happening today? You know, we thought we were getting closer on Friday and Saturday, but then when they brought that proposal, they could have brought that proposal to us on Friday, but you know, it, it just felt like we were spinning our wheels because of the same thing over and over again, recycling. And it's time that we stand up for our students and it's time that we make a difference in Denver so we can keep our teachers in the classrooms. We want to go back to work. We want to do that as soon as possible. Okay, Rob, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, um, Gary and Anusha, I was talking to Rob a little bit earlier about whether there's a possibility that he would go back to the table with the district today to avoid something like this happening tomorrow. He said, doesn't look like that's the case. They've got a lot of protesting that they need to do, rallying they need to do, and the next time that they're going to be with the district at the negotiating table will be Tuesday night. So expect to see similar things like that we're seeing here today, tomorrow morning in front of schools across DPS. Yeah, all right, thank you for guiding us through that. Is, and we are, of course, expecting to hear from the district later this morning as well. Now, since a strike in Denver first became a possibility, the district said that it had plans to keep the schools open. Things are going to look a lot different for schools today. Nine News reporter John Glasgow is live at Hamilton Middle School. And John, we're talking bigger classrooms, kids in auditoriums. What else is going on? Yeah, it's uh, really picking up down here. A lot of the students are being dropped off by their parents. I'm going to step out here and let you have a live shot look here of what's happening at the moment. We have all of these, about 40 union teachers that are striking here. They're wearing DCTA shirts. They've got uh, signs that say higher wages. You have cars that are driving by honking in support of these teachers. Uh, we're also seeing, too, that as the students arrive, some of them are actually joining in the the march here in support of their teachers. Now, as far as what's happening here at the school, we understand that the students will be split up in the auditorium, the gymnasium, and the cafeteria. There's about 800 students here. There's eight teachers that are non-union that are going to be on the job. There'll be six substitutes that are expected to report to class today. 
uh, only one from the district office. There's 15 that are coming from the district office that are actually, but only one of them is actually certified to teach. But you can see that it's just getting a lot louder down here. From what we know so far as well is that the students have to be off the property by 3.15 today. And all of the after school classes are canceled as well as the athletics. So uh, you can see that this is definitely starting to pick up. And I spoke with one teacher who said that they see a lot less students than they normally would on a Monday. So Gary, the teachers tell me that they're here and they're ready to put in a full day of protesting. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, John, thanks for that update. We appreciate it. And I news reporter Eddie Randall live at Cheltenham Elementary School. So Eddie, parents of those preschool kids have to find uh, something else to do because they're not going to have the preschool classes today. Yeah, that's right, Gary. A big talker this morning is the early childhood education classes that have been canceled by DPS. Now the parents of those students are going to have to find child care for their kids. Now there are a lot of different organizations or different uh, parents and uh, strike teachers that are going to be assisting with that. But let's talk more about why this is all happening. The reason for the cancellation is of early childhood education classes is training and background checks needed to staff the ECE classrooms. Now that's all according to DPS Superintendent Susanna Cordova. The number of students that this is going to affect nearly 5,000. Almost three fourths of those students qualify for free or reduced lunch. Now some parents with kids in preschool are coming together and taking shifts watching kids uh, of similar age as a fix to what they hope is going to be a temporary problem. Now Highlands Methodist Church is also stepping in to help. We did reach out to that pastor on Sunday who told us that they are planning on taking on about a 30 additional uh, students into their church, also providing them with lunch as soon as they get the approval from the state. So we are uh, we have information for that church on our website, 9news.com. They did say, Anusha Gary, that um, they will accommodate students with the highest need first. Now, if you're wondering why my live shots do not look like Liz and John's, it's because we just talked to the principal here at Sheltonham Elementary, and she says all of their teachers are actually scheduled to still be in the classroom, so they plan on things going like any other day as they were going last week. Now, we did hear of another site, Colfax Elementary, that is about five blocks up. We're going to go check out that uh, elementary and bring you guys a live shot from there uh, in the next 30 minutes if we can get to that location. Back oh, to you. All right. Very good explanation of what the difference is going on. Thank you, Eddie.